when drawing cross sections through folded strata, it's useful to have some conceptualization of what folds look like. Now, some folds, of course, can form nice round hinges uh, like I'm making here in this piece of cardboard, but not all folds have this form. Some can be decidedly angular with very straight limbs and really abrupt fold hinges. In these situations, we can think of folds as having two straight limbs or dip panels where the orientation of the layer is constant and a very narrow zone, the hinge, where you move from one limb to the other. In addition, we could simplify our form of our fold by thinking about the uh, axial surface which comes through here as being a mirror plane from which you transpose from this limb to the other, uh, which would bisect the interlimb angle, the angle between the two limbs. So we can use this idea to help us draw cross sections with straight limbs, abrupt hinges, creating kinky fold shapes. Well, let's use these ideas to draw a cross section. So here's our profile that we're going to be constructing and it's got some bedding dips collected along an outcrop trace here, shown by that line. And in the subsurface, a unit uh, with a top and a base, it's not very thick. And our challenge is to try and draw the continuity of this um, layer into the subsurface. It might come to outcrop, but to try and construct where it goes on the cross section. So we'll start in the well and we'll start off by constructing a line that's perpendicular to this trace here of the bedding, which is going to take me in this orientation and I'll just project this up into the sky like that. And we'll do the same, we'll go this way to start with. So I'll do the same here on this particular horizon. Let's get the perpendicular. Here we go. Down like that. Project both so they meet. So we've projected both of these into the subsurface. So now we need to bisect this angle. First I'll just extend this line out a bit. Like this. So to bisect this, we're going to use a pair of compasses, use a very simple technique to find the bisector, draw our arc in across, two points on the line like that. Um, I'm going to use that compass here, one arc there, get it in the pin, pin it in the right place. There we go. So we just join that back to the meeting point of our two lines and that's our oops that's our bisector of that angle now this equates to the fold axial surface i'm generating quite a lot of construction lines in here so i'm just going to highlight this in red so we can see through all these various pieces of pencil line and i'm just going to draw it here like that so that is the fold um, axial surface. And what's going to happen is the bed's going to come along here to this point. So let's just continue this bed across. So it intersects our fold axial surface and then it's going to kink down here. I'm not going to draw this, this limb in next uh, until I've constructed the next um, fold axial surface between these two bedding planes which is clearly going to come approximately down in this orientation. So again, I'll construct my perpendicular line out from the bedding here. Get that all squared up. Something like that. These meet here. Just going to push this down over here a bit so we can continue it. So we can do our construction for the bisector down here. So let's find the bisector again of this angle. Pop it on here. Find where they intersect there. Pop that back onto there. Like that. Pop that there. Join that point 
back down to here. And there is our angular bisector. And I'll put this in red because again, this is another one of our axial surfaces through here like this. Okay, so now what we need to do, actually I'll take it much further down. You can already see that it's gonna be heading off into the subsurface. So what we need to do now is to take this dip and project it down to this angle here. In fact, I'm gonna take it even further down. Down to there. Okay, so this bedding trace is gonna head off down in this direction, parallel to this bed trace, which defines the dip between these two axial surfaces. Just see if I can line that up so this is, I'm just trying to eyeball that in. If you've got a graded ruler, it's much easier to do this sort of thing. Okay, so that's gonna go down there. These of course are parallel, top and base, not too bad. So that's where this bed comes around, it inflects around that axial surface and then projects all the way down to here as a limb to this axial surface, which is clearly going to rotate um, our beds into this orientation, defining a sin form. Because we haven't got any more data over in this direction, we can use that bed reading there, just continue to project it down. So I'm taking this dip and that will show us where the beds go over in this direction. And I'm not gonna take them any further than that because that's really how far we can take it given this. And we can, it obviously would have continued further over here. If we had more bedding readings, we'd find our next fold. Again, to keep this simple, I'm just gonna color this in so we can see what we're constructing as we go. Useful having colored pencils, because we are generating quite a lot of construction lines in here when we find our backs set by sectors and so forth. So that's the fold so far. Now let's push it over to this side. I'll take a shortcut while doing this and we can just Fast forward through this process, now you've seen how it works. These two orientations are parallel. We can just project that one down. that but we'll find the next one over here because these two uh, bedding orientations are parallel so these construction lines are parallel um, so we can just take this bedding orientation here, which we've got, and just keep it parallel, such as I can with these tools, like this, and just take it all the way across to there, like that. So this bed thickness, essentially maintained all the way across there, and then it inflects as we cross uh, into this domain. So let's construct the hinge line that we're aiming for, the axial surface we're aiming for, uh, in this position over here. I'll draw my bisector on already, all these the places we need to find it. So there's this bisector. So now we just need to use uh, this dip, um, project this all the way down to, keep going down actually, there's not enough. Down to here. And we'll go all the way across to the next position right down here. Oops, oops, oops. And now it'll deflect into this orientation. So we'll just get that to about there. Get that straight. Like that. 
and there and we just color it in and there is our bed colored in with these sin form little kinky sin form in here composite antiform in here one two three uh, fold kinks in here and another sin form over here so that's the shape of our structure using this kink band method so this is the result of us supplying the kink band method to, to create our uh, cross section it works because of the assumption that um, fold limbs are essentially planar structures uh, within which we can use a single bedding reading to define the continuity of a dip panel which exists between one axial surface one hinge if you like and another which are places of abrupt angular change these are mirror planes um, so that the axial surfaces bisect the interlimb angle. So that's the technique we've used. The top tip here has been to use a pencil but then use um, other colours to bring out the important features as we've been building our construction so we don't get confused by all these various construction lines. It's a really neat technique, it's quick and easy to use and as I say it's applicable to folds where the hinges are angular.